Welcome to Beyond Bosch. I'm your host, Jessica Dahl. I'm so excited about today's guest that I just want to dive right in. Today we have Rita Barrios. She's a vehicle cybersecurity thought leader, innovator, software engineer, researcher, professor, a student, and mentor. Rita, thank you so much for being here. Happy to help, happy to be here. Yeah, absolutely. So obviously I gave a lot of information about who you are, but that's not truly who you are, right? So I'd love to hear a little bit more about you. Um, just let the audience in on what you do, who you are, and what you do. So um, thank you for having me first, you know, yeah. first of all. Um, I've been with Bosch for about 18 months or so. Um, but my, my passion is cybersecurity. I've been in cybersecurity since before it was called cybersecurity. Um, you know, and so I've always been in the tech space from a career point of view, from a personal point of view. When I grow up, I want to be a chef. <laughs> I love it. And so, you know, um, I love to cook, so that's what I do in, in my spare time as well as travel and um, participate in and various women's groups uh, that are focused on cyber cybersecurity and technology. Okay, great. So, so what are you doing today? Like, what's your main role here at Bosch? My main role at Bosch is uh, my title is a senior cybersecurity engineer slash project security manager, mm -hmm. and so my job is um, I'm with the EYX1 organization, and we oversee cybersecurity on the vehicle side okay. for all projects regardless of the OEM or, or who it might be. So currently now I'm, I'm focusing on the Ford project. Okay. Um, I, I came from Ford. Um, I spent a lot of years at Ford, um, at Ford Credit and then Ford Motor. And so it was a natural fit to just come right into it. But I do work with GM and Lucid and others as okay. well. Okay, nice. And uh, I help mentor some of the younger folks, um, the newer, I shouldn't say younger, the newer folks in our group and, and cybersecurity and vehicle cybersecurity. Oh, that's very cool. So we were talking a little bit before we started recording and you said, you know, you've been at Bosch about 18 months, but you've been in the industry a while, right? Yeah, so um, I've been in vehicle, on the vehicle side of cybersecurity since about 2016. Okay. And I started that when I was a, a full-time professor at University of Detroit Mercy. Um, and before that, um, I worked as a senior database administrator for Ford Credit for 14 years. Okay. And so I've been doing access control since, gosh, I'm, gonna, I'm really going to date myself here, since at least 91. Okay, okay. <laughs> all right. And so cybersecurity really hasn't, the domain hasn't changed a whole mm -hmm. lot. It's just how we're scaling it and how we're implementing it has changed. So we went from enterprise cybersecurity you know, um, email and, and financials and all those things, to moving it to the embedded space, into this very small footprint space. And you have to implement differently, but the concerns are still the same. Sure, you sure. Know? So, um, and so at one point I was in charge of 900 million consumer accounts at Ford Credit. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and so um, well, during that time I was working as a database administrator and you know, we always worked at night at like three in the morning or oh something. Gosh. And I'm sitting there changing passwords for, you know, because that was our normal job. And I said, well, who's watching me? Yeah. You know, I have all this power, <laughs> you know, yeah. and who's watching me? And so that's when I, I, I started working in research and developing um, an insider threat model using artificial intelligence and, and those sorts of things. And so I built, uh, intrusion detection system for a database. Wow. So. <laughs> wow. That's really cool. So how did you get into this? So I know you've been here a while, you have all this experience, but what made you go down this path? <laughs> That's a really interesting, I get asked this question a lot. <laughs> um, and you know, I, I always follow Richard Branson and he has this quote that I keep, always keep in the back of my, my mind. If somebody offers you a really good opportunity, just say yes wow. and figure it out when you get there. And so people have just offered me really good opportunities and uh, kept my mind open and say, you know, hey, Rita, can you go do, can you learn about EDI, electronic data interchange? And I was a junior programmer. <laughs> and I said, sure, I know about this. And I went and I spent a whole bunch of time researching and sure. understanding and, and doing those things. And so when somebody said, hey, can you do vehicle cybersecurity? I'm like, yeah, sure I can. And then I went and took 
a graduate certificate at University of Texas in embedded systems. <laughs> oh my gosh, I because love it was that. Just, it was just like, so, I'm of the mindset that nothing's impossible. It's, it's all a matter of what blocks you put up for yourself mm. and what you're willing to do and sacrifice. It takes time, it takes a lot of time. Yeah. So how did I arrive here? Just great opportunities. Yeah. You know, yeah. and not saying no. Yeah, that's really good. Wow, that's inspiring. I would love to hear kind of, as you've been going down this path, saying yes to opportunities and just kind of going for it, what are some of the biggest obstacles that you've had to overcome? Uh, for me, I think the biggest obstacle I've had the personal, from a personal point of view is imposter syndrome. Mm. And I, I think a lot of people, both male, female, you know, we started off very young and we were in these meetings with all these really smart people that, that know a lot more than you do and you start questioning yourself. And even today I start questioning myself and I have to, you know, take some steps back and say stop, yeah. refocus, you know, you got this and here's how you move forward. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So and I, uh, some of the, I, I'm also a mentor for, um, it's a whole nother story, Michigan Council of Women Technology, as well as I'm a member of T200, which is for an executive level women's organization. And even I find in this executive women's organization, very powerful people, CIOs, C, the C-suite people, yeah. they still suffer from this imposter syndrome. And, and we're always doubting ourselves, you know, and I don't know why that is, but we do. Yeah, I love that you just shared that because I hope that that made me feel seen, right? Like before I do anything, even before recording the show, like you have to kind of, you're, you're always in battle with that internal voice, you yes. know? And mm -hmm. I think that's super inspiring that you just shared that with anyone who's listening because we're, it makes us all feel less alone, right? Like, yes. yeah. and seen in that, yeah, you're gonna face that, but we need to overcome that. And one, one of the best pieces of advice I give my mentees is to ask questions. Mm. And even when I was a professor, um, I would always tell my students, ask the question. And there's no, and I'm 100% I'm on, there is no such thing as a stupid question. Yeah. And if, if you're asking that question, chances are somebody else is asking that yeah, question. Yeah, that's so true. That's and so, so true. When, my, when my students would get their internships, I would say, okay, you have to promise me, ask two questions at every meeting you go to. I love that. <laughs> I love that. Because I want to bring them out. Yeah. And, and we all know nobody gets ahead by keeping your head down. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that's a good one to remember with the nobody gets ahead. I love that. So uh, wh who influenced you, like, in your life? I mean, you've got all God, these... So many people. Yeah. So many people. So, uh, as I said, I'm part of Michigan Council of Women Technology, and I was one of the original members of it, of the group, and it's been around for, I think, 15 years now or something. They have 500 members or whatever now. And of those original group, we still get together once a month for for dinner or, or coffee or whatever it might be, and they're, they're all very high... Um, powered people, yeah. you know, um, and they, they, some of them are retired now from their positions during the C-suites, and we all grew up together, oh, you know, yeah. we, we all started at, at the same place, you know, and we just all grew up together, and we take different paths, and, but we all come back together, and so I would say my biggest influence from a, a, a professional point of view are these women. From a personal point of view, my biggest influence was actually my father. Mm. You know, we we're, were a military family. My dad was, um, I have seven brothers and sisters, oh <laughs> five brothers, um, and um, I'm number seven of the eight. And so my dad was military, and so he ran the household very military-like. Sure. And people say, oh, wasn't that horrible? And it's like, no, it wasn't horrible. He was my biggest supporter. Mm. You know, if there was anything that I wanted to do, he would always say, make a plan, execute the plan. You know, be a soldier. And I was yeah. like, okay. So now when things get hard, I make a plan and I execute the plan. You know, so he, it, people say, well, don't you have female influences? From a, a, a personal point of view, yes, I have my friends and all yeah. of those things. But from a deep personal, it was my dad. Yeah. You know, he was the, my biggest supporter. I love that. That's awesome. That's so good. So with that, I love asking everybody who comes on the show a piece of advice, which you've already, I feel like, just been giving <laughs> constant advice, which is amazing. Um, do you have something that, it could be career or personal, just a piece of advice you want to leave with the audience? You know, for, for 
uh, from a, a, a per, just a, a personal, even a career point of view, just don't say no. That's all you have to do. Um, if somebody, some tasks are super hard, but you can do it. And, and just take a step back, focus, and say, what is it that I have to do to get from A to B? Mm. And it may not be an easy path. There is no easy path, you know. Great success comes from great risk, mm. you know. And so if we just take that risk, we'll, we'll all do just fine. Yeah, you know? yeah. And one thing, one thing I always tell, my, especially my daughter and my son, you know, um, you're either going to chase the dollars or you're going to chase your passion. Mm. You know, and sometimes the dollars don't add up to the passion. Mm. I want to be a chef. There's, there's no way my dollars would add up to be what I make now. Sure. You know, but that's my passion. So am I not going to do it? No, I'm putting it on hold until I have time to do yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. You know, so, so just choose what path you want to go and own it. Mm. Take it 100%. That's really good. Yeah. Wow, I love that. I did want to kind of come back a little bit just because I think it's so important talking about mentoring and that mentee-mentor relationship. And you mentioned you're so passionate about it. You're teaching, you know, and you've had opportunities to influence, you said the newer people coming in, right? doesn't matter what age they are. But I just want to hear a little bit more about that. You said you're passionate about mentoring women in tech and STEM fields, right? Like Yes. I mean... Um, so when we got at Michigan Council of Women in Technology together, um, there really wasn't a great support system for women in the engineering field, in the heavy tech field. And so we needed to come together and do that. And as the organization grew, um, I, I had moved to the university then, and they said, hey, we want to start Camp Infinity, which is a, a elementary, middle school, technology okay. camp. And I said, okay, let's do this. Yeah. And so I brought it to the, the, the university and we had, you know, 25 <laughs> middle schoolers teaching them robotics and oh, web cool. design and all those things. And the passion, they're so excited. They dress up the little robots and feathers and all sorts of things. Yeah. You know, and then we, as they grew, we moved them into the high school camps. And then some of the students from there became my students at the university. And now they're, they're in leadership positions That's at cool. various organizations. And so me personally, uh, it helps me to keep focused and keep grounded on what I'm doing this for, you know? And so um, I get as much out of it as they do, Yeah. you know, um, just to that. see them grow. Yeah. And some of my students are here and I, when I started at Bosch, I'd email them and I'm like, hey, what are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> well, speaking of, I mean, I don't know if you noticed, someone just walked in the studio. Yes. As a little surprise, we wanted to bring on Shams because yeah. she yeah, Shams, has been. How are you? Hi, how are you? Oh, so good to see you. Nice to see you too. <laughs> when we were talking about when we were talking about having you on the show, you mentioned this relationship here, and I thought it was really special because Shams is a third-year student at U of M Dearborn. Mm -hmm. She's worked with you, and you have given her some mentoring and also just like an opportunity to shine. And I would Absolutely. love, I'd love for you to maybe introduce yourself, mm -hmm. and then just how you guys met and a little bit more about that opportunity. Yeah, absolutely. I can go ahead. Um, my name is Shams. I'm an intern at ETOS currently, but last year I was an intern at Bosch in the central product security team. And that's how I met Rita. We had a product security training event and Rita's always supportive. She always comes to those. So it was really nice to meet and connect because in the cybersecurity industry, there's not a, a lot of women in leadership, but Rita's a really great mentor to have. And she's opened a lot of opportunities for me that I never would have thought of having in the past. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, a, it's always wonderful to see young people want to move into this field because it, it is, honestly, it's not that exciting. <laughs> <laughs> it's very technical. It's very engineering sure. kind of. And, and so it's just wonderful to see young people passionate about the same things that I'm passionate about. And so um, a speaking engagement came up to do the keynote for uh, Women's History Month. And last year, I did the inaugural one, sure. and, and they called me again. They said, do you know anybody? I said, well, why? You, you have my viewpoint. I've been around for a million years. Let's have the viewpoint of somebody just coming into the field and what their view is and what they need and what, what they would like to see. You know? And so I introduced Shams to uh, Jonathan Moore, 
And so now she's going to be doing the keynote at the, the dinner next week, I think it is. Yes. Oh, that's yeah. awesome. You know, it, you know we, got, we got to keep bringing people forward. Even like one of my uh, colleagues, we're publishing a paper together. And I said, well, you have, to, you, ha you have to be first author. I'll be second author. He goes, but this is your idea. I said, first author matters. Mm. I said, I have 50, 60 papers published. You need this one. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that's amazing. Yeah. That just shows the kind of person you are. You know, so, I mean, it, that's what it is. It's about going to that next generation and bringing them up to, to take the, the flag and, and run with it. You know, we, all, we always say you know, we stand on each other's shoulders. I am great because of the people I shoulders I stood on and who they stood on before. Mm. And so now it's time to bring that next generation in. I love that. I, I think that's the way to wrap it up because <laughs> that's amazing. I love seeing other people supporting one another, but especially women supporting women when there's usually like this kind of bad taste in our mouths of competition and instead just creating an environment of collaboration, right? Absolutely. That's so important. So I'd love to just wrap it up there and just all of us say bye to those in the audience and thank you so much for being here and we'll see you next time. Well, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.